Let's bring in Dan Nathan, Principal Risk Reversal Advisors, and Carrie Firestone, Chairman and CEO of Aureus Asset Management. Both are CNBC contributors, and Steve is staying with us. Uh, Dan, what did you make of today? Well, it was kind of near capitulation. I mean, I think that a lot of terms that, uh, you know, people use when they see big declines like this, um, you know, you heard the, the expression orderly a lot. And then maybe it's just orderly because these orders are actually going through machines and it's not as much open outcry. So some of that bid ass that you guys were just talking about in past crises, when humans were handling that order flow, we would see, um, you know, spreads get really wide, right? And we'd see a lot of herky-jerky action. So we're seeing less of that. And it's kind of lulling, I think, some investors to sleep. Um, you know, listen, I'll just mention this, is that on Friday, um, the Dow was down 1,000 points at its low, or about 3 o'clock, it had that late-day rally. Um, the fact that we are doubling up some of that price action on a Monday tells you that we're kind of getting close to that or closer to that capitulation. We really just need to see that gut punch when no one can take it anymore, and that's when you probably see selling exhaustion, and we could see that at some point this week. Carrie, what do you see? Do you see that, that level of possible uh, capitulation? And, I, and I'm going to pose something to you. This is not a stock market crash, and I'm old enough to remember 1987. This isn't a crash, but this is a cascade. Well, it definitely is a cascade. And remember, we're down 19 percent. So the market seems to be pricing in a recession or at least a real slowdown. Uh, it's interesting that 12 years ago today, which was March 9th of 2009, that was the bottom in the financial crisis. That was the bottom of the market. So it's, it, it's an interesting date to remember, not to suggest this is, but it felt the same way. And of course, the fear that we're seeing today in a visceral sense seems greater. And perhaps it's because losing your life, if that's the fear, is much scarier than losing some money. So this market reacts and tumbles over itself to get out of its way. And we saw that with the energy stocks that were down, you know, 20 to 40 percent. Many stocks were down. That was just unbelievable to me. And we don't really own energy, but we had a number of stocks that were down over 10 percent today, which is very rare. So in some cases, there's capitulation, but we're going to have to retest this because even though it's not as bad, even by 50 percent, as what occurred in 2008 and 9, when the world was collapsing. Remember, the banking system was essentially bankrupt. We still yeah, have yeah. to find a stability point. Yeah, uh, Tyler, Dan, I, would take, I would take some issue with that notion that this wasn't a crash. When you look at the totality of risk assets over the last couple weeks, when you look at equities, when you look at rates, when you look at commodities, we have seen a major crash in risk assets. We've also seen a crash in financial conditions. So I think to, to describe it as anything else doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. And I'll make another point. You know, when Kerry just mentioned March 9th, 2009, we bottomed. The stock market topped out in November 2007. I think investors have been lulled to sleep by this kind of easy monetary policy all over the world to remember what a protracted bear market is you know, we've just had all of these buying these dips. We've had these very narrow right. or, or, or kind of, um, you know, shallow sort of declines over the last 10 years in these V reversals like we saw in November, January, November 18, January um, 2019. So make no mistake, we have seen risk assets crash. Now yeah. it just depends how long it lasts. Perhaps I was being too polite in not using the word crash, but, but, but I remember that day in 1987 when we lost 22%. We have not done that, but we have certainly cumulatively almost lost 22 percent over a period of multiple days, and, and that's why I use the phrase cascade. I think you kind of end up in the same place, maybe uh, with a, a slightly extended time frame. But let me, let me wh whatever, we can, we can argue about cascade or crash. But, but Steve, I want to come back to uh, something Carrie mentioned, and that is this idea uh, that this is different than 2008, which it surely is, because, be, because back then the banking system seized up. Do we see any signs of that now? We do not, and I believe the banking system to be in better shape. I believe the banks are better capitalized. My worry, if I could give you one, Tyler, is that we don't see where all the risk is and don't know where it's accumulated in that it's specifically outside of the banking system. Mm -hmm. But to Dan's point, I just want to throw it back at him a little bit. If I could turn over here to the, 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 the screen. and Dan is this, used to this, having things thrown back at him. This idea of a capitulation, I get what you're saying. That's looking at stock trading and stock levels. 
I would submit that we cannot get to that point until we have visibility on the two most important aspects of pricing a stock, which is earnings, the earnings outlook, and the economic outlook. And I think we're still maybe several weeks, maybe even a few months from understanding that. A lot of this will come, I believe, from looking at the data on infections and those sorts of things to see how this spread. Is it contained? Do people feel comfortable going out of their house and going about their daily lives? But I just don't know that we can get there till we have anything to base it upon other than what you're saying is stock levels. Go ahead, but Carrie. you can look at what the worst case might be. So you can look at what would happen if earnings for 2021, so next year's earnings, are, you know, pick a number. I know this is sort of S&P talk, but 170 a share. They were supposed to have been 175 per share this year, and maybe that could be the number next year. So a down year this year, some recovery next year. You put a 15 multiple, 15 and a half multiple on that as a realistic scenario of a bad economy. About them now, and you don't start to price things the way Carrie's thinking about them, you're going to miss these opportunities, which could be the sort of decade-long opportunities. I think that's fascinating thinking. I know we got to go, but the idea of right off this year and price the stock yeah. based on next year might be something you can get your brain around in terms of figuring out what to do here.